bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensa Otobiel. And now, today's word. Three things I want to talk about, then I'll share briefly from the book of Isaiah at the end of my conversation. The three things that I, I just want you to pay attention to. The first is that if you're going to do great things for God, if you're going to do anything extraordinary for God, you have to take God seriously. You have to take God seriously. And it's something that I am very particular about. I don't take things God for granted, you take God seriously. When God says something should be done, you have to take God seriously. And don't minimize your service for the Lord and your worship for God. And secondly, you have to take God's work seriously. I don't know about you, but you know, uh, I take God and his work very seriously. I am glad that God called me. I am glad that God gave me an assignment. Without his assignment, where would I be? Without God's grace, where would I be? Without God's help, where would I be? I would be somewhere, but definitely not doing this. It's God's assignment that enables us to do his work. We have to take God seriously. We have to take God's work seriously. We have to take God's people seriously. I've been a pastor for a long time, and uh, I've been guided by these principles. Never to take anything for granted. Even if I've done it for a thousand times, never take it for granted. Every time I come to church, I come here as if this is my first time preaching. This is the first time I'm doing something. And, and, and when we're doing uh, something like Greater Works, we plan as if this is the first time we're doing it. And you're going to do it well, and you're not going to take God's people for granted. And you're not going to give people shoddy work because they themselves like shoddy work. You know, because sometimes people don't know the difference. Until you show them the difference, they don't know the difference. But we don't say because people don't know the difference, we're not going to care. We have to care, and we have to give people the best. And it translates into how we work, how we do our own work. Everything you see happening in church, I hope that will reflect in your own attitude, in your own work, in your own business, that you don't take God lightly in your area of work. And you don't take your assignment lightly. And you don't take the people you're supposed to serve lightly. Whether you are running a shop and there are clients, customers who come, you don't take them for, for granted. You don't say, well, they'll be here all the time because they love my product or they love me. Because one day the people would not be there. You know what it takes to pastor the same congregation for 40 years and go to church every Sunday and see people. When I started pastoring, one of my greatest fears, I used to have nightmares about it, that one day I'll show up in church and nobody will be there. I was go in a small class. I said, what if, what if I go to church today and nobody shows up? But people show up. Could be 12 people, could be 20 people. 25 people, but they show up. And then it's 30 people showing up. Then it's 50 people showing up. And they come up every time, and it's 100 people showing up. And then one day you wake up, and it's 300 people showing up. And then it's 500 people, and it's 1,000 people showing up, and 2,000. And then they run into thousands, and they keep showing up. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. And in the same way you run your life, just because things happen doesn't mean you take them for granted. And I just... Pray that the spirit which drives what we do in this church will also drive what you do in your area of business. The same attitude, the same commitment to work, the same diligence, the same making sure that no mistakes are made, making sure that every part is well done. It will amaze you what it takes for somebody like Pastor John to come and say all the uh, catchy things he says. It's uh, 8 o'clock in Accra and 9 o'clock in Lagos and 10 o'clock in... Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, 
You know what it takes for him to do that? The whole week. I'm telling you, the whole week. He doesn't just get up to say it. Everything he said, he writes it down, he edits it, and then he memorizes. Many times I go to his office, he's memorizing something, and he's memorizing. He's constantly memorizing and working and working just to come and say, it's 8 o'clock in Accra and, and 9 o'clock. And, and we enjoy it and we say, oh, Pastor John is so great. But we forget. He doesn't take you for granted. And he doesn't take his job for granted. Now, Pastor John can come in and just say, well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout, amen, and just shout, 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 and that's it. And you will be fine. Because you don't know the difference. But he has to care enough to say, the people don't know the difference, but I will show them the difference. <laughs> I hope you're understanding that. Because sometimes people don't know. Whatever you give them, they will take it. But you have to commit to giving them something that is better than anything. And we, we make that demand. On him, we make the demand on the sound people, on the technical people, on working, synchronizing our time, making sure everything works so well, and not, don't miss one point. And the band, and they, and they synchronize because they are being timed, and how you have to end your song, and all of that, how to start a song, how to finish a song, and there's so much that goes on. The end effect is you come to church and you believe, I have been ministered to. But for that to happen, we have to take God seriously. We take his job seriously. We take God's people seriously. If there is one promise I'll give to you in this church, here, at least in Christ's temple, that will be our commitment to you. We take God seriously. We take our work seriously. We don't joke with our work. We don't play games with our work. Nobody plays games. Everybody is working very hard for Pastor Sir to come and lead that prayer. Do you know how long it takes to even generate a prayer point? I used to give these people a lot of trouble because they write three, three prayer points and I'll cancel it. Rubbish. Go and write new ones. Why did you write it? Why can't you do it? And eventually everybody gets the rhythm. Now I don't correct anything because everybody gets the rhythm. Everybody works with it. But what I'm saying is they don't just get up here and say, shall we pray and say something? A lot of thought, a lot of focus, a lot of commitment goes into everyone who stands on this platform. Why? Because we take God seriously, and we take his work seriously, and we take his people seriously. That's why we do it. If we don't take you seriously, we'll give you rubbish. If we don't take God seriously, we'll give him rubbish. If we don't take his work seriously, we'll give him rubbish. We are committed to excellence in this house. And, and it's, it's one thing coming to a church like this and, and enjoying it, but the carry away is that you also take that same spirit and say, I'm going to be like Christ's temple in my business. You know, I'm a carpenter. I'm a carpenter. I want to be Christ's temple in this carpentry shop. I'm a mechanic. I want to be Christ's temple in, in my mechanic shop that I'm going to apply these same principles and I'm going to be very diligent. Even when my bones are tired and I think I need a one year sleep, I need to show up because the work must be done. The work must be done. And of course, if I sleep, it doesn't matter because most of you can't tell the difference. But I can know the difference that I wasn't ready. Everything I'm saying here, you check my notes, I have written them. This is what I was going to say. This is what I planned to say. This is how I planned this service to be like. Because I take God seriously. I take God's work seriously. I take God's people seriously. You are very important people. Very important people. I look at your faces. You look very, very important. You are very important people. You have options, you have time. You can choose to come to church, you can choose to stay at home, you can choose to go to another church, you can choose to play golf, you can choose to do something else this morning, 
but you decided to devote your time here. I cannot take it for granted. I cannot take it for granted. I cannot. No matter how faithful, loyal, committed you are, and every day you come, I can't take it for granted. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, because I don't get to speak about personal things in the pulpit much, but the reason I'm sharing this is because I, I don't want you to miss the lesson. I don't want you to miss the lesson. I don't want you to come to church and, and just, oh, we had a great time, and then, and then you lose the lesson. Then you go back to your life, and it doesn't reflect anywhere in your life. You're, you're just working by heart, and you don't care about it, and you don't care about your work, and you are lazy on the job, and, and all of that. I don't want that to happen. I want you to take the spirit of what happens here Sunday after Sunday, uh, event after event, greater works, you cross over all the big events, uh, the 40th anniversary is coming, all that goes into that. I want you to see it and imbibe the spirit. And say, this is how I want my life to be. This is how I want my business to be. This is how I want to run things in my life. I want to take what I do seriously and not joke with it. Amen? And I hope the lesson will not be lost on any one of us that we will apply the same diligence. Does it mean things will be easy? No. Life is never easy. Life is never easy. People think we do things in this church because we have money. Contrary. We don't have that much money. You yourself know how much you give. We don't have that much money. <laughs> we don't. But we have intention and commitment to the intention. So once you have intention and commitment to the intention, money or lack of it is not as critical because your intention will drive everything. And the little you have, you do maximum things with them. You do things that people who have 10 times more than what you have can't do because they don't have the intention and they don't have the commitment. All right? So you're never always going to have what you need. You're never going to have all the monies you need. We don't put too much pressure on people to give. Whatever we get, that's what we work with. But we have the intention that we take God seriously, we take God's work seriously, we take God's people seriously. And I, I just pray that every member, it will be the mark of every member of this church, that wherever you, you work, people would say, wow, that's a serious woman. They don't joke with their work. That's a serious man. They come to your business, whether you have a small shop, a tabletop shop, or a pum pum store shop, whatever you have, carrying your shop on your head. People must be able to say, you're not joking with what you're doing. And I believe if you do that, success will follow you. Success will follow you wherever you are. Success will follow you. You may be young, but you do mighty things for God. Amen. All right. Now, I've said much without quoting scripture, so let me quote scripture. Isaiah 42, verses 8 to 10. Just a couple of things I want to speak to you about. And it says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you coastlands and you inhabitants of them. In Isaiah chapter 42, God is announcing the presence of his servant, of the Messiah. So he's announcing that something is happening. And what is happening is he says, the former things have come to pass. So God is announcing, he says, hey, listen, things have changed. The things which used to be have come to pass, they're gone. So God is making an announcement. Things have changed. 
I believe that this greater West God is making an announcement to us. Things have changed. The old things are gone. And then he says, and now I'm telling you something. New things are happening. The new has come. Things have changed. It's a new season. It's, an, it's a new place. It's a new thing God is doing in our lives. And God says, before the new thing comes, I announce them to you. Now, if you have been around from when we started 40 Days of Power and when we started Greater Works and up to now, if you've been following, a lot of announcements have been made. Things declared, dry bones are coming up, becoming an army. That we are living in the overflow. We're going for the spoil. There is a cause. We've heard all of these things. What is it? It's an announcement. What is the announcement saying? New things are happening. God says I'm doing a new thing. The thing is God can be doing a new thing, but we'll still be living in the old. Because choosing to live in the new takes a lot of effort. Takes a lot of effort. So he says, the new thing is happening. If new things are happening, what should we do? What should be our response? How must we respond to the new things? And he talks about singing a new song. Verse 10, sing to the Lord a new song. Everybody say a new song. Say one more time, a new song. So after greater works, what are we doing? We are singing to the Lord a new song. Somebody say, I'm singing a new song. A song is made up of three parts. Rhythm, melody, lyrics. God says, sing a new song. That means that the rhythm must change. The rhythm is how you respond to a beat. The beat and how you respond to it. God says you're going to change your response. If the response has been fear, it has to now be faith. If the response has been complaint, it now has to be positive declaration. Does it mean things are going to change? They may not change around us, but God has declared change. And when he declares change, the rhythm must change. We must move differently. And the melody must change. The melody is what you are composing, what you are creating, what you are putting together. It has to change. And the lyrics is your words. The words must change. Change in rhythm. Change in melody, change in lyrics. If you're going to partake of what God is doing, there has to be change. You can't sit under all this anointing and go back and do things the same old way. Oh, I'm so tired. I don't even know where my daily bread is coming from. Oh, things are so hard. I don't think I could ever make it. Well, God says that dry bones are alive. Is that how to talk when dry bones are alive? God says you're living in the overflow. If you're living in the overflow, do you talk about how broke I am? How broke I am was the old song. But now we sing a new song. How prosperous I am. How strong I am. How healthy I am. How fulfilled I am. God says sing a new song. That's how we respond to new seasons in our lives. We move differently. We compose things differently. We say things differently. And it's a discipline we have to impose on ourselves. Is Ghana going to change overnight? I don't think so. Tomorrow is Monday. You're going to face the same old demons you are facing, same old devils. Same old situation, transportation problems, traffic jam, prices are the same, but your song will be different. Go to the office, you're going to see the same people, people you don't like. 
<laughs> the people you wish would leave the office will never leave. They don't even go and leave. They're always there. <laughs> but your song will be different. The traffic will be bad if you are coming from Adenta to work in Accra. Traffic will still be bad. It will be, still be jammed from Frafraha. It will still be bad. Wherever you live, going to work, you still face the same traffic. But your song will be different. Your song will be different. You turn on the radio, you hear the same old people who aggravate you. All the argument about MPP and NDC and MPP and NDC and all of that and all of that. You're going to hear it. But your song will be different. In other words, the change is not necessarily going to happen all around you. But you must choose your rhythm. You must choose how you move. You must choose how you compose things, how you put things together. And you must choose what you say. It's the same for me. Same for everybody. Because sometimes after a great meeting like this, you will be hit with something. You know, you, you just feel that, oh, after, after I've had such an, uh, a great uh, uh, ministry, everything will be fine. Sometimes you go home and somebody has stolen from you. You go to the car park, somebody has stolen your rear view mirror whilst you are greater working. <laughs> After greater works, you go and say, oh, who stole my, my, my mirror? Well, they stole your mirror, but your song will be different. Your song must be different. Just know when the devil is trying to distract you, take your eyes off something, and he hits you with certain a distraction, an irritation. Somebody steals your wheel cup. And you just feel, ah, and after all this glory, my wheel cup is gone. Your song must be different. Wheel cup or no wheel cup, we'll sing a new song. And if tomorrow morning the rent, your landlord comes and says, hey, the money, <laughs> He said, but I thought I went to greater works. The, the, the landlord has said, no, no, I also went to greater works with you. I also want greater works. I also believe God is blessing me through you. Where is the money? <laughs> we are all greater working. No matter what you hear, the song must be different. Because God is doing a new thing. He has announced it to you. He has told you ahead of time of the new thing he's doing. He's telling you that he's going to cause the dry bones to become an army. He's saying you're going to live in the overflow. He says you're breaking barriers. He says you're going for the spoil. He's saying all of these things. You heard it. And when you heard it, you knew God was speaking to you. So let your song be new. All right? No matter what you go to face, no matter what the enemy throws against you, no matter what demon smiles at you or doesn't smile at you, no matter what you hear, your song must be different. Because God has spoken a new word to you and his word must be your song. His word must be what is on your lips. His word must be what you're working with and composing with. His word must be the rhythm you are moving to. And it has to be intentional and deliberate. You do it because you want to do it. You don't do it because it's easy. You steal yourself and you say, I'm going to live the overcoming life. No matter what life throws at me, I'm going to overcome. Amen. So let me end with how I began. If you're going to do great things for God, you have to take God seriously. You have to take his work seriously, his assignment to you. Whatever he, work he calls you to do, take it seriously. You have to take God's people seriously. Everybody God brings your way is God's person. May not be a church member, maybe a client, maybe a customer, maybe a colleague. But take them seriously and don't take anybody for granted. Don't take your work for granted. Don't take God for granted. And you're going to go places in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.